We welcome you online today. It's an honor to have you watching locally around the area, around the state, around our nation and world. We're honored to have you here in this room with us today. And I just believe that God is for us, God is with us, and that the best is yet to come. Amen? Come on, let's give it up one more time for this God we serve. He's a great God. Well, I'm excited to preach this message today in our third week of our series, Outside My Window. And we're using this series to prepare our hearts for a big reach in December, as you heard my wife say, for At The Movies. And I believe, as I preached last week on the big heart of God, that God is, he's patient. He's not slow. Remember, he's patient because he wants all people to repent. His heart is that. And so as I believe as we just, uh, as we link up with his heart, he blesses that effort. So I want to thank you for being a great church of love, of generosity, of giving, of serving, of helping right now. I heard last week we're helping about literally about eight families a day with furniture, clothes, appliances, food. Come on, that awesome? Helping people. Give and it shall be given. So I want to preach a message today. I want to read a story out of the book of Acts. I'm not going to read the whole story just for time. But I'm going to read a story out of Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there or just follow me on the screen. You can turn over your worship guide and take notes as you feel led to. I want to preach a message entitled, Reach Out. Everyone say, Reach Out. It sounds simple, but I think there's something to be said about the power of when you and I reach out and to be reminded of this and to never count it as, as nothing or to be desensitized to it. Um, but I believe there's something to be said about reaching out. Amen. And so as I go through this story today, I believe you're going to, all of us in this room and online, we're going to see ourselves possibly in two main characters. Now there's three characters, but one is, is by himself. And then the other two characters are actually a team. They're a tandem. So all of us in this room and online will see ourselves in one of these two characters, if you will, on either side of the coin. And the good news is that Jesus, he wants to touch all of us today and meet us right where we're at. So, Father, I thank you for this great worship experience. I bless all those watching online, all those in the building, all those in the city kids wing. I thank you for your kingdom come and your will be done. Use us today for your glory. May our heart be yours and may our spirit be lifted up to you. I pray that all of us in this room and online would lay down our resistance right now. We would set aside our distraction. We would be willing to receive something from you and move forward in our faith. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen. Amen. So I'm going to read these verses to you. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, look at us. Then lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. I love this verse. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, get up and walk. Now, if I finish the story, isn't that awesome? If I would finish the story, the man got up, he was miraculously healed. And the Bible says he went leaping, dancing, and praising God. And the whole church was shaken by it. And it really was a, just another miracle just to springboard the early church into massive growth and influence. When I think about this idea of you and I understanding our responsibility and the power of when you and I reach out, I first look at verse 1, and I see where Peter and John, these two great apostles, in fact, John was closest to Jesus on the earth more than any other person. I see these two great men as pillars of the early church. Their writings are in the Bible that we read today. But notice the emphasis that even these two men, they put an emphasis on going to prayer and going to church. You know, the Bible says in Luke that Jesus himself made it a custom to go to church. 
it's good to go to church. Uh, it's impossible for you and I to say, I, I love Jesus, but I hate the church. Because the church is the body of Christ. In fact, I challenge us if we have that mentality, why don't all of us leave today after the worship experience and everyone that's married, husbands, look to your wife and say, I love your face, but I hate your body. And then when you feel the cold hand come across your face and knock you out in the car on the way home, you'll know why. No one in their right mind would say that, lest you be killed in the house. So we love Jesus. Everyone awake? Praise the Lord. And we love Jesus and we love his church because they're synonymous. They're connected. So notice these two great men put a focus on prayer. So before you and I, in any area of our life, reach out. How many know that reaching out takes energy? Reaching out takes strength. Reaching out takes focus. I'm talking about maybe just reaching out not only to God or, um, um, and to people, but how about reaching out in your marriage and being an active participant in your marriage, in your parenting, in your schooling, in your career, anything in life. You know, if you want to have a good diet and be in shape, you got to reach out and put effort. How many know that's true? So I look at verse 1 and I see something very important for us before I go on. Before you and I think about reaching out, we always must reach up first. In other words, you and I must reach up and connect to God on a daily basis. If we're going to have the sustenance and the strength and the energy to, I mean, to give of ourselves, to invest into those around us, to reach out for God as someone has reached out for us, you and I can never forget to reach up. And notice these great apostles, the early church, focused on prayer. They focused on community. I could read other verses to show you this. They focused on this. And this one verse just shows me that these two men didn't forget the power of reaching up and connecting to God. So if Peter and John, if they did it, then I believe you and I have to do it too. You and I have to reach up so that you and I have the strength and the energy to move forward in our life, in our faith, so that you and I can reach out. So how do we reach up? How can we reach up on a practical level and move forward? Because here's, here's a true thing. I serve God by serving my local church. One way that I love God is by loving and being a part of a local church. Thank you for all the great amens. This is all true. Amen. It's all biblical. So what are some ways I can reach up and connect to God on a daily basis? This should not be forgotten. Every one of us in this room and online, I challenge you to pray every day. I don't care how long. I don't care where. Pray every day. Amen. Connect to Jesus. Prayer is your connection and communication to God. And I believe when you and I do it, it opens us up to hear back from God. I believe that God speaks to us. Amen. The reason why I say this often is because right now, by stats done from church-going people, daily prayer and reading of the Bible is the lowest it's ever been. So you and I have to understand that in the pace of our life and all the things coming at us and all the advancement of technology and all the things that we have that are potentially a blessing, you and I can never forget the basics of our faith. And the apostles put an emphasis on the basics, prayer. And, and of course, they were writing the word as they were going. But, but they had this connection and they reached up to God. So I want to encourage you that in a practical level, we reach up to God every day by praying. We also reach up to God by reading the Bible every day. And I encourage everyone in this room and online to get a Bible plan and, and, and follow the plan. Use your phone. And if you don't have it, get the YouVersion Bible app and follow a plan and read the Bible every day. You know, the Bible says in Psalms 119 that when you read the Bible, that light comes into you spiritually. I don't know how that happens, but I believe it. And it will speak to you. In fact, I heard a great man of God say, more importantly than it is you reading the Bible, it's letting the Bible read you. 
And so when you read the Bible every day, it gives the Bible a chance to do that. Now, how about this one? This is all about reaching up before we reach out, being connected to God, our source for energy, for sustenance, for strength, etc. We pray every day, read the Bible every day. How about this? As I've already said, be a part of a local church. I want to encourage you to be a part of a local church. And, and Summer and I are honored to have you here. We're, we're overwhelmed at what God's doing in our church. We're, you know, for the next service, we're already figuring out the school parking lot is, 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 is almost packed out every Sunday. The school parking lot across the street. So 930 is a great worship experience to come to. Bring people to this one. So we're navigating some great stuff. I'm honored to have you. But this is a biblical thing. Healthy churches are not trying to get something from you. They're trying to help God come through you. So I want to encourage you to go to Next Steps next month. Be a part of the life of the church. Consider going to a group in the spring. Can, I mean, consider being a part of the dream team. And we know that this is biblical, that you and I find our purpose when we're a part of something bigger than ourselves. So I want to encourage you. These are ways that we reach up and that we find strength and support in faith so that what? You and I can reach out. We can be an active participant in the affairs of our life and do what God has called us to do. Because if you and I do not have the strength to do this, then we won't do it. And you and I first, like the apostles, it just stands out to me. These two great men, among other people, went to prayer at three in the afternoon. They were hungry for it. And then God blessed them as they did it. So you and I first must reach up to find what we need, then as we're strengthened by God, as we're fortified in our faith, surrounding ourselves by community, I believe then we have the empowerment to reach out. Now in this story, as I mentioned, you're going to see yourself maybe on two sides or one side of the coin. A few things stand out to me when I think about this story and when I think about the power of, of when you and I reach out. First off, this man was lame from birth, and he was at the temple reaching out for money. This tells me that people everywhere, you and me included, are reaching out for something. Every human being is reaching out for something. Rich, poor, it doesn't matter. Our social class, economic class, our nationality. Every person in the world is reaching out because inherently we know there's more and we need more. And so we're reaching for something. Now this natural or, excuse me, this man was reaching for natural things. Now, please hear this. Obviously, he was lame. So he was crippled, and he, and he couldn't work, I'm sure. And so he was asking for money every day or as many times as possible at this gate called Beautiful, which is by the church at that time. This speaks to you and I is he saw money as the answer to his problem. But this is a typical thing because money couldn't heal him of him being lame. Only Jesus could. Now, in this room today and those online, we may find ourselves as this first character in the story. We may see ourselves as lame in some way. I would say maybe in a blanket statement, in a bold statement, that all of us are lame in some way. But some of us today may identify with this more so than Peter and John. We may identify ourselves that maybe we're lame physically. Maybe we're lame emotionally mentally, relationally, financially, spiritually, or other. And we find ourselves reaching for natural things, seeking it to be what we need. Money helps solve the problem of to, of to possibly paying his rent or having food, however it was set up at that time. So he was looking for a natural thing. Nothing wrong with natural things. But the I believe the temptation that this man had and that we have today is to think that money or natural things is what we need to fulfill our lives. And that's the mistake. Because, folks, there's nothing wrong with money. There's nothing wrong with romance. There's nothing wrong with dreams and success. Nothing wrong with any of it. The issue is when that becomes number one and we look to that as the fulfillment of our need of God, that's the problem. When God is first, he blesses all the rest of it. But the problem and, you know, that we have as humanity is we're constantly in this juggling act as God first, no, he's second, no, he's first, no, he's third, no, he's first, no, he's fourth. And we're juggling money and, and sex and, and this and that and success and this. And, and, we're, and we're putting kids and then, and then all this stuff. And it's God, 
listen, God first, everything else will be blessed. When God's first, everything else won't be perfect, but it can be in order and be blessed. And we see this man looking for natural things that was only, it was incomplete at best. Jesus was the fulfillment of what he needed. For us today, I want to ask you in this room and online, what are you reaching for? What are you reaching out for? Are you reaching out for acceptance? Are you reaching out for forgiveness? Are you reaching out to be loved? Are you reaching out for money? Are you reaching out for romance? Are you reaching out for success? Are you reaching out for, you know, for, I mean, for an intoxication, a moment of being intoxicated? What are you reaching out for today? Here's the thing. We can learn from this man that money did not meet what he really needed and that Jesus wanted to touch his core issue and give him a new beginning and raise him up and send him on his way. And that's what Jesus wants to do for us today. Isn't that good news? Hey, come on, give him praise. I love Jesus. He'll meet us right where we're at. So if you find yourself, if you find yourself lame, if you identify with this first character of the story, I want to encourage you, there's hope for you. Jesus is what we need. Jesus will heal you. Jesus will make you whole. Jesus will lift you up. Jesus is the answer. Thank you, Andre Crouch, for the world today. Old school gospel right there. The second thing I see is not only do people reach out for something everywhere, but the second thing I see in this story is that when you and I, as a Christ follower, when you and I reach out, something happens. Notice this great truth. Peter and John took time for this man. This is a challenge for us today because, as I mentioned, all of us are going at such a fast pace. I've been convicted of slowing down my pace. I know I've missed opportunities to reach out to people along the way. Notice they didn't have to go five miles out of their way. And I want you to please see this. They didn't have to drive an hour out of their way. They didn't have to do something sensational to reach this man. This man was located in the natural flow of their life. I know that there's been so many times I've been too busy. I've been too focused on the end of my destination for the day or my goal or, when I, or my appointment or my errand. And I've walked right past people. I, I've ignored them. I've, I've focused on something else. And then I can also tell you stories of when I slowed down, when I just took my time. And then when I was not in a hurry, I could see around me. And when I took time to reach out, something happened. Something took, I believe something took place when I did it. For us today, if you and I can remember that when we look outside of our window, this is the heart of God. Looking outside my window is seeing how God sees me, but also it's seeing how God sees others. You and I have to remember, I've noticed this over the years as I've served God, as I've been a part of church. I've seen people get reached out to, and I've seen them be loved on, I've seen them be accepted. I've seen them be carried through hard times. I've seen them be carried through grief. I've seen them get prayer at the altar. I've seen them have all the opportunities happen, and they were crying out for God, and then God answers their prayers, and then I've seen something interesting. When it was their turn to reach out, they wouldn't do it. They would complain about serving. They would complain about reaching out. They would get mad that church was doing certain things to reach out to other people. And, I, and it always baffled me that they received grace. They received mercy. Someone loved them. Someone accepted them. Someone took time for them. Someone was patient with them. Someone gave them mercy. And then when it was their turn to do it, I've seen so many people refuse to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, something happens when you and I reach out to other people. Peter and John took time. And when you and I remember, when you and I remember that someone was gracious to us, not just Jesus, but someone was used by Jesus and was gracious to us. And there was a person that sat by us and there was a person that loved us. There was a person that walked us through our mistakes there was a person that took time for us. And if anyone has done that in our lifetime, it is our, I'm going to be strong. It's our, it's our duty, folks. It's not a volunteer. It's our duty to reach out to someone else 
and give them the same Jesus that's been given to you and I. Come on, give him a better praise than that. He loves everyone the same. Peter and John did this, and when they did this, something great happened. They took time, and Jesus moved on this man. And you and I, when you and I take time for people, when we just slow down just a little bit, look around and take time for people along the way to work, at work, as we shop, as we go, along the way. God will use you when we reach out. The other thing I saw in this story is that Peter and John gave this man Jesus. And you and I have the chance to give people Jesus. Here's how I see church in a, in a nutshell. It's not because I'm a pastor. I didn't want to do this. Ask my parents. I, I, was, I was fighting it, man. I remember I spoke at, um, uh, in, in, in high school, I was a part of a racial reconciliation group. And they asked me to speak at uh, a convocation to the whole school uh, during February, Black History Month, and I did. And um, I never forget, I wasn't living for God. My mom came, and I wasn't living for God, and I spoke, and... I remember I walked off, and I heard what I know now, the Holy Spirit say, you're going to be a preacher for me. Mm Mm-mm, no, Jesus. I didn't hear that. I didn't want to do this, and and so I don't say this because of of, of me doing it, or, but I believe this. If I believe what the Bible says, and you do too, that Jesus is the way, truth, and the life, No one comes to the Father except by Him. That means that church, what we're doing right now, is the most important thing any of us could ever do or be a part of. And and, and here is why. Because people find life everlasting in these moments. This is why the pressure is constantly against churches to do it half-hearted, to be apathetic, to not you know, plan and not have organization. That's why you know, we do walk through. I preach to the staff on Wednesday because I want to do my best for you on Sunday. That's why we prepare it here at City. It's why we have teams in the, in the parking lot because we're here to do our best because if just one person comes to Jesus, the Bible says all of heaven rejoices. This is, we put our best effort into this. I put my best effort into this because this is not about me. This is about Jesus touching people. Two weeks ago, a young man came up to me after the, uh, the second uh, worship experience, suit and tie. He's been coming. And he, he came to me and he said, PD. He, he smiled. He said, PD. I said, what's up, man? He said, I received Jesus today. I'm saved. I said, that's what this is about. But you and I can be challenged as a Christ follower to forget that. And we maybe misinterpret or we just put it on the shelf, the idea of the power of when you and I reach out. This is why you and I have the great privilege of giving Jesus away to people. It's the greatest gift we can give away. Nothing wrong with giving money away to the poor. We do that. Nothing wrong with giving clothes, appliances, furniture, housewares, hygiene products, whatever, to the poor. We do that. That's all good. The Bible tells us to do that. Do it when you can. But the greatest thing we can give is Jesus. Peter said, I don't have silver and gold for you. But what I do have in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Man, let it happen again, God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You and I can give Jesus to people. I tell you, I never forget this. There was a guy in a wheelchair that I was preaching at a church of 20 people in the country. They were 20 minutes late talking about tractors and plowing hay. And I remember uh, I was, in, 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 and he was in a wheelchair and he couldn't walk and he, in, and he had hepatitis C. And I was, just, I was young enough and dumb enough to believe what the Bible says. And I remember I was preaching my heart out and I grabbed his hand. I said, in the name of Jesus, get, and before I could think, Lord, is he going to fall down? I said, get up and walk. And he got up and walked around. And then I, I came back to that church, and they said, that dude is healed of hepatitis C, and he's walking today. Come on, give God. That's what God can do. Come on, that's what Jesus can do. 
He can do it right now. I believe in healing. But, we, but you and I can give Jesus away to people. You and I can give hope, mercy, and truth. And I want to say this, that you and I can give the Jesus that we received away. I want to ask you, what Jesus are you giving away? This may challenge you, but I don't want to give a Pentecostal Jesus away. I don't want to give a Baptist Jesus away. Catholic, Methodist, Episcopalian, Lutheran, God bless all the roots. I'm not here to give my group Jesus away. I just want to give Jesus away. I'm not here to give my way away. I want to give him away. I don't want to give my persuasion. I want to give him to someone in need. The Jesus that gave me mercy and grace. The Jesus that gave me forgiveness. That Jesus that gave me a second chance. The Jesus that accepted me. That's the Jesus that I want to give. Not to go on a rant, but I think it's hilarious. We ask God save Hollywood. Oh, God save people. That, and then God saves Kanye, and half of us believe he's not saved. It's like, come on, people. That's stupid. Like, God do it, do it. He does it. You didn't do it. Like, I'm sure God's like, psh, psh, psh. But he, ah. Now listen to me. When I got saved in 1996, it's funny how... We forget, it's about the power of reaching out. For those of us that are seasoned Christ followers, we forget the process we are walking through, let alone when we first got saved. So when I first got saved in 96 at a a church camp, I came back. My dad didn't even believe I got saved. He was a doubting Thomas, and his name's Kim. And I came back, and he knew I was saved. And, I, and, man, I woke up different. I, I stopped cussing. No more weed. Man, I was changed. Man, I was wrecked by the power of God. But I came back, and me and my friends, I came back on Friday. On Friday night, me and my friends watched the movie Showgirls. Thank you, honey. I appreciate that. What, what are you doing here? Screaming out in the front row. So, <laughs> before I knew you. It's before I knew you, baby. So, and, I, and that's like soft porn. I mean, so, but it, it doesn't mean I wasn't saved. It, was in, it, it means I'm in a, I would never watch that now. But I was in a process. It's funny how we forget how we walk through that process. And then maybe we come out of things, well, why aren't you doing Shut up. Let the dude have a chance. Closed on Sundays. It's my Chick-fil-A. People don't need our preference. They need his presence. People don't need our political position. They need the king of kings. People don't need our opinion. They need God's word. People don't need our way. People need his way. Reach out and let God use you. Come on, give him praise today. He wants to use you in your life. Reach out and touch someone. Reach out and give a helping hand. Reach out and love someone. Invite them to church. Thank you. In closing, invite someone to at the movies. Only 2% of all church-going people in America invite anyone to church. If you and I, hear me please, I believe this statement. Most of us, not maybe all of us, most of us in this room are not, this is what convicted me. I read this book called Simplicity by a pastor in the West Coast, and he had this statement, and it's so true. For most Christians, he said, our obedience, or excuse me, our knowledge is beyond our obedience. I love hearing great preaching, I love hearing great messages. But in truth, I don't need to hear another message to know what I should do. I know what I should do. The issue is, am I doing it? You, most of us, don't need to hear another message to know what we should be doing. We all know what we should be doing. Our challenge is doing it. Reach out. Reach out. Practical steps for the message today before I close. Practical steps. 
this week, slow down. At the restaurant, slow down. Put your phone down. Look up at the waiter or the waitress. Who's around you? On the job, who is the Holy Spirit leading you to? As you walk past someone on the street, homeless, good looking, not so good looking, who knows? Take time. Who can God use you? Say, I'm the lame person. That's why you're here today. This is a hospital. And if you're lame, you're welcomed here. You're accepted here. You have a place here. God's going to lift you up and give you a second chance, a third chance, a, you know, whatever it is. I want to encourage you today, move forward. If you identify with that character of the story, you have a home here at City Church. Welcome home. If you identify with the disciples, maybe I'm, I'm strong in my faith, I'm, I'm secure in my faith, then it's your time to slow down and take time for other people and reach out and let Jesus use you. So practicality, slow down. Number two, reach out to someone this week. Just, it doesn't have to be big. Just reach out and let God do something in you. Here's, uh, every, like, every week I like to tell a story, and, and I thought of many stories, and the staff told me to tell this one. So I said, okay, I will. They like this one. For a season of time, I went to a certain restaurant often, almost every week for lunch. And because of, I was in a hurry, I would sit in the bar. I remember one day I was sitting in the bar and two people came in and they recognized me and I recognized them. And I could tell on their face and they started talking to each other after they saw me, why is PD in a bar? But I befriended the bartender and I would have lunch, I would have soup and some other things and I would eat and, and, and I would talk to her and we became friends and she, and on a first name basis. I go in the next week and see her and I'd invite her to church, give her my card and tell her to come to church. And, and she began to open up about her mom being sick and her mom had cancer and she was afraid. And so I said, I'll pray for your mom. And we just started to talk and it didn't happen right away, nothing sensational. And, and I remember just kept on building that relationship with her and introduced her to my wife and, you know, take her there, take my dad there and just we'd talk and she got to know some of us. And what I didn't know how the Holy Spirit would lead us just along the way is that her mother was best friends with my cousin's mother. And I had no idea. Finally, her cancer got worse. And she said, we come to my mom's house and pray for her. And I said, I will. I never forget meeting my cousin there because she knew the family more than me. And we walked in to this apartment and she was laying on the couch, struggling with pain. And I remember kneeling down next to her and she knew who I was. And I had met her one time before at the restaurant. She was there when I was there one day. And I called her by her name and I said, do you want to receive Jesus? And she said, I'm ready to receive Jesus. I could tell her heart. She had guilt. She had shame. I could feel it in her voice. I could see it on her. And man, she was laying there. She was awake. She was clear. She was focused. And her voice was strong. And I led her to Christ. And I prayed for her daughter and the Holy Spirit came in that place and she became a daughter of God. And she died about two days later. And I thought about the power of when you and I just reach out. Just, just, just take time for people, man. You just never know. Just, just take time. And, and it's not about me. It's about how can you and I look out. God wants to bless us, of course. But man, how can I reach out and help someone else out? Because I would have never guessed that that would have led to her mother receiving Christ. But I'm so glad because one day I'll see her mother again. And I believe she'll say, thank you for going to that bar. Because I received Jesus. Will you reach out? Will you let God use you and make a difference in at least one person's life in your lifetime? for eternity. Come on, give Jesus a great hand clap of praise. His mercy and grace. Let's stand to our feet today. You online, please tune in and respond to God right now. As heads are bowed and hearts are bowed in this moment, you would say today, Pastor Dave, I've never received Jesus in my life. I've never received him. Others of you would say, man, I have received Jesus at one point, but right now I'm far from God. I, I'm not close to God. 
Both of those positions are biblical, and yet Jesus is the remedy for both of them. And you would say today, I've never received Christ and or I have, and I need to come back to God. If that's you right now in this room and online, and you say, yes, that's me, raise your hand to heaven right now. I want to pray for you to receive Jesus today. God bless you. Good. Awesome. God bless you. God bless you. Good. God bless you. God bless you. Good. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. People coming to God today. I love it. Isn't that great? Now, I'm going to say, Pastor Dave, I, I, either, I either identify myself with being lame. I feel lame at some point in my life, in some area of my life, and I need Jesus to pick me up. I don't need money. I don't need love I don't, or romance. I need Jesus more than all of it. And you know that today, and you want to reach up for Jesus. And others of you would say, man, I feel secure in my faith, but I know he's leading me to reach out. He's leading me to give back. He's leading me to take time for someone along the way. And I want God to help me. If you find yourself on either side of that coin and you want Jesus to help you, go ahead and raise your hand to heaven. I want to pray for you in this room all over. Thank you. God bless you today all over this room and online. Thank you so much. Follow me in this prayer so no one's left out. And say, Lord Jesus, my heart is yours and I run to you. Please forgive me for anything that's wrong. I trust you and I give you all of me. I'm yours. I need you above everything else. You are my hope. You are my answer. I am yours. Through the Holy Spirit, help me reach for you and help me reach out for you. I am yours. Amen. Prayer team, come down. Come on, give him one more praise. He's moving. Come on down, prayer team. I want to encourage you today in these last few moments, just please take time and just receive from God. The band's going to come back out and they'll lead us in worship. If you receive Jesus today, please come down and receive prayer. If you have a prayer request about anything, please come down and receive prayer. If you want to take communion, you're more than welcome to. It's on the far walls. Please do it. But just respond to God and the band will dismiss us and we'll have a great week. So may the Lord bless you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May he be good to you. And may the Lord give you peace. And for this message, may all of us reach out.